All right, so continuing on to look at uh, quadratic functions and quadratic equations and their graphs and their formulas. Um, today we're going to look at intercepts. And if you remember from a couple sections or units ago, when we're finding intercepts, if we're finding the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0 and solve for y. And if we're finding the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. All right, so when we're solving a quadratic formula, oftentimes, or a quadratic equations, oftentimes we will need to use the quadratic formula. And there's a special part of the quadratic formula, and it's the part inside the square root sign that's called the discriminant. Discriminant. And it is the part inside the root sign b squared minus 4ac. And that part of the quadratic formula will help us to determine how many x-intercepts are we looking for. So if I were to plug in the values, remember the values come from the coefficients of x squared bx and our, our constant value. If I plug them into the discriminant and it, if I get a positive number, no matter what the number is, I'm going to have two x-intercepts. So the parabola will intersect the x-axis twice. So if my discriminant is greater than zero or positive, I'm going to have two x-intercepts. If my discriminant equals zero, I'm going to have only one x-intercept. And if I think about that, if my discriminant, or this part right here, or this part over here, equals zero, I'm taking the square root of zero, which is zero, and if I take a number and add or subtract zero, I get the same number. So when I go to solve this, I could get two solutions, but they would be the same number. So in that case, it's only going to hit the x-intercept at one spot, and it will be a, at the vertex. And if my discriminant is less than zero or it's negative, I'm going to have no x-intercepts. And if I think about this one, going back to the square root por portion of the quadratic formula, if inside the square root I have a negative number, I'm doing the square root of a negative number, and that is not a real number. So I would be using i's and I would have an imaginary solution here. And when that happens, I don't have any x-intercepts. So looking at the next page, we have a function and it asks us to find the x-intercepts first. So that means we're going to set the y value equal to 0. So remember, f of x is the same thing as y. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to have a quadratic equation. So I'll have 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. And this is a quadratic equation. And it's in standard form because I have all the the terms on one side and it's set equal to zero. And there's multiple ways that I can solve a quadratic equation. Um, if we think of those ways, I can do factoring. Okay, And in this case, um, I would have to find something that multiplies to be negative three, adds to be six, 
Um, and I'm just going to tell you, it doesn't work for this one. But another method I could use to solve a quadratic formula a equation is completing the square. And the third way is to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so these are ways to solve quadratics. Quadratic equation. So first of all, let's determine how many intercepts we're looking for because we may not even have any x-intercepts to find. So we're gonna use that discriminant so we'll set A is negative 3, B is 6, and C is 1. And for B squared minus 4AC, we're going to plug those values in. So I have B squared, so I'm going to have 36, minus 4 times negative 3 times 1. So this is plus 12, negative 4 times negative 3, that's plus 12. 36 plus 12 is 48. So I will have a positive discriminant. So that means that there's two x-intercepts. Oops, let me do that there, sorry. So I have two x-intercepts because when I plug the values into my discriminant, I get positive 48 and that tells me that the number is positive, so I have two. So to find those, I need to solve the quadratic equation using one of the methods, and I think that the easiest one for this would be to use the quadratic formula. So to find those x values, I'm going to have the opposite of b, and b is 6, so the opposite is negative 6, plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Well, that's the discriminant, and we found that over here to be 48, so I'm not going to calculate that again. And then I have over 2 times a, which is negative 3. I do need to simplify my square root of 48. So this is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 48 is 4 square root of 3. So I have minus 6 plus and minus 4 square root of 3 over negative 6. And there are multiple ways that I can write this. I can um, break this up into two fractions where I have one plus and minus two thirds square root of three. I can factor out a two and cancel, but for our purposes right now, I'm gonna leave this right like it is. Okay, so these are the values that are gonna be my x-intercept. So if I were to plug these into the calculator, and I did negative six plus four times the square root of three, get an answer, divide by negative six, I'm gonna get 2.15. And if I did negative six minus four times the square root of three, get an answer and divide by negative six, I'm gonna get an answer of negative 0.15. And I'm doing this, I, I don't want to leave, I don't want to change my answer to um, an estimated answer. I want to leave the exact, but the next step here is telling me to graph this. So when I'm graphing this, I know that these are going to be points on my x-axis. I can also find so these are the x-intercepts. I can also find the y-intercept if I set x equal to zero. So if I set x equal to zero, I would have 
0 squared times a plus 0b plus c, and that's just going to give me whatever c is in my function. So my x, sorry, my y-intercept is going to be 1. Okay, so my y-intercept is 1. That's going to be important in a minute as well. So to be able to graph this, I need to know where my vertex is. And my vertex from, yes, uh, from the last part of this section is going to be from the x coordinate or the h value is minus b over 2a. And the y coordinate of the vertex or the k value is going to be to plug this back into the function so it's going to be f of minus b over 2a, whatever that number is. So if I were to find my h value, I'm going to take the opposite of what b is. So I'm going to go back up here. b is 6, so I'm going to have negative 6 over 2 times a is negative 3. So this is negative 6 over negative 6, which is 1. So my vertex is going to have an x-coordinate, sorry, an x-coordinate of 1. And my k-value will come from when I put 1 into my function. So if I rewrite this, k is going to be negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 1. So that's negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3 plus 1 is 4. So my vertex is 1, 4. So if I graph this, I know my vertex is 1, 4. So over 1, up 4, that's my vertex. And I've got some other points that I can put on here. I have my x-intercepts. So I have 2.15, so that's just a little bit past 2. I have negative 0.5, that's a little bit past 0. And I also have a y-intercept of 1 that I can plug in here. And I can then kind of draw through and get a parabola. A little more curved at the top. So I've graphed this and then it's asking me to find the domain and range. So I'm just going to label here my vertex. So this is the point 1, 4. My domain in any quadratic function is going to always be all real numbers. My range is going to be from negative infinity up until 4. So I can do that the y values are less than or equal to 4, or I could do negative infinity to 4. And I'm including 4, so I'll give that a bracket. So then it says to determine where f is increasing and where it's decreasing. So the function is increasing as I follow this up from left to right. I go up until I get to the vertex. So this is increasing from the x values here all the way up to 1. So from negative infinity to 1. So negative infinity to 1, and it's decreasing from 1 down to infinity. Okay, so we actually found a lot, and I know that that looks messy. Um, but let's do another one for today. Um, so here we have another function, x squared minus 6x plus 9. And we want to find out if it opens up or down. Well, if we look at this, the A term is always going to tell us whether it's looking up or down. So no matter what 
form this is in, if it's in vertex form or if it is in standard form, the A value is, is the first one here and this is positive. So in this case, A is positive. Whoops, sorry about that. A is positive. So it's going to open up and it asks us to find the vertex. So if I look at this and find the vertex, I need minus B over 2A. So if I label A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 9, I have the H coordinate being minus B. So I have the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6 over 2 times a, which is 1. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the x coordinate of my vertex is 3. The k value is going to be take 3, plug it back into the equation. So 3 squared is 9, minus 6 times 3, plus 9. So this is 9 minus 18. plus nine, so k is zero. So my vertex is three, zero. So we found the vertex, the axis of symmetry, just looking at my vertex, axis of symmetry would be the vertical line going through the x coordinate of three. So that would be the line x equals 3. So we found the axis of symmetry. We want to know the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, looking at the equation, the y-intercept is when x equals 0. And in this case, if this is 0 and this is 0, the y-intercept is positive 9. And then it's asking for the x-intercepts. All right, so the x-intercept, remember that's when we set f of x equal to 0, x squared minus 6x plus 9, and I need to solve this equation to determine what values of x are on the x-axis. So if I look at this, I see an equation that's easy to factor. And I can do this, numbers that multiply to be 9 and add to be negative 6. That would be x minus 3 and x minus 3. So we see here, these are the same value. So if I solve for x, x equals 3. So there's only one x-intercept. I didn't even use the discriminant here, but if I did check the b squared minus 4ac part, if I put in b is negative 6, so if I take negative 6 and square it, multi su or subtract by 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, this is 36 minus 36, so my discriminant is zero. And if we look back on the page before, I'm gonna bring that back in here, if my discriminant is zero, I'm gonna have one x-intercept and that would be my vertex. So we already saw that over here, that my vertex is three, zero, and that is my only x-intercept. So that's my x-intercept. Um, then what else do we need to find? We got the x-intercepts and then the domain and the range. Well, always in a quadratic function, the domain is going to be real numbers. And the range, if you would rather look at this, I'm going to have 
a vertex at 3, 0. I know it's going to open up. So my range is the y values that are greater than or equal to 0. So y is greater than or equal to 0. Or using um, the other notation, I have neg... I ha Ooh. I start at zero and then I go up to infinity. So zero to infinity would be my range. And lastly, where is it increasing and decreasing? Well, this time it's increasing when X is greater than three. So I start at 3 and I go to infinity, and it's decreasing from inf negative infinity to 3. All right, I think we are going to stop there, and we'll pick this up next time.